Thank you, thank you. He said he's gonna let me introduce myself. Where did he do that? At? I, thought, <laughs> I thought I was gonna get the whole end. So, let, let, appreciate you. I taught, I taught stuff last year, so this is what I get for talking stuff. Put your hands together for your host this evening, for both of your hosts this evening. They are amazing. Yeah. Believe me, it's not easy to do this because y'all all look at us like we owe you money. <laughs> and they do go here, they might owe some of you money. So, the situation being, they love me when I say that, I am a deadly pen. My name is Greg Delaney. However, my pen name is Reality. I have been doing poetry in Colorado for longer than I want to admit, going on 17 years. I have hosted some of the longest running poetry venues in Colorado. I am a poet. I've hosted poetry shows. I wasn't a promoter, so that really sucked. But what I had the opportunity to do was stand on stage with some of the best writers, performing poets that you would ever see. We didn't do slam poetry, we did performing poetry, which means that you all would come to the club and you would normally have drinks in your hand and be a little drunk and laugh at us and we would entertain you while you did that, but we would tell you stories of our pain. So poetry to us is not necessarily a slam thing. If you ask me what is poetry to me, poetry is what I live, it's what I see, it's what I breathe, it's my way of expressing things, that's what poetry is to me. And these poets that I'm bringing to the stage tonight will be these poets that give you that understanding of what it is to them. Now, keep in mind, some of them were gangbangers, some of them sold drugs, some of them were, well, I can't say these who were here, but some of us have been through a lot, so this is our expression, this is our pain. At the same time, this is our life, this is our love. So, with that being said, I love the whole attentive thing you're giving me right now, which is really freaking scary. <laughs> but I need energy. So y'all ready for some poetry? Let me hear you say, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That was awesome. Okay, one more time. Are y'all ready for some poetry? Let me hear you say, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, tonight, the poets that I'm bringing to the stage are deadly pens. <laughs> Meaning of deadly pens is this. Their peers have recognized them as being some of the greatest that they've ever done, ever did it. We give you the power, you've given yourself the power, to create life and end life within a pen stroke. These poets are some of the, I know that was like me, right? They are some of the best <laughs> who's ever done it, who I've ever seen, and I, I thank God that I've had the opportunity to stand on stage with them. So the first poet I'm gonna call to the stage is a young lady who when I first heard her speak, it shook me. And I was in my mad emotions that day, I'm not gonna lie, I think I might have cried a little bit, but it was amazing. To hear her power, to hear her voice, all I ask you to do is pay attention. This young lady has been on HBO, Brave New Voices. She is considered one of the most outstanding speak out poets. She is also a deadly pen. So let's get this. Y'all put your hands together for Dominique, AKA, believe me, believe y'all. already been able to tell from back there that we're all poets. For real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was us. So, uh, oh, how, we, uh, God. how to do Please this. Put your mittens on! Swear! That's right. All right. I'm gonna spit my black history piece to start and then we'll get into it. Thank you, Jamal. <laughs> they call me E. I was never given a last name. This was only the first case of identity theft. Look, I know what y'all heard about me. That I was carved out of the ribcage of a man only as an afterthought, and they told you I looked differently. But make no mistake, they have burned down my libraries and tried their best to scorch my memory, but I remember well. The sweetness of God's breath on the back of my neck when he whispered me into existence. He told me I would be the first of this new species he was experimenting with. There was no talk of dominion. But he did teach me a certain harmony with Lady Gaia and told me to embody her beauty so I walked tall. Wide hips and extra weight to nourish the children I would carry and as they grew, 
I taught them. Taught the young, the small, the weak, taught them plenty. They came to my crown and asked me how to run their nations. Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, sucked from the supple breast of my knowledge. Little did I know when I turned my back, they whipped slave ships into it and create this Bible that blamed me for the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. But there was no snake that tempted me to leave the promised land. I'm pretty sure those were your guns, chains, and aggression. So was it really fruit? or the middle passage that closed Eden's gates, this Bible that tells me childbirth is a curse and I am the cause, well, I am sorry. Sorry that I broke my back to carry your children, but if you ever dared ask me, I'd call you the curse. I've been called temptress, but it was you who stripped me naked, called me bitch, and made me hit my knees until I knew what forbidden fruit really tasted like. And the abuse didn't stop after Lincoln. It was just heavily disguised as the media, tossing me a pair of booty shorts and telling me to sway my hips to the rhythm of lynch ancestors because it reminds racists of a better time. They never look me in the eyes because they want me to forget that I have them so that I can ignore the Planned Parenthoods that huddle around my black neighborhoods with these advertisements, making them as appealing as Easy Bake Ovens to child Hitler. I have been waiting for the UN to step in and label the genocide, but I am only met with government officials planting cocaine into my son's body until he is addicted right. and in jail or dead. Look, I know why they do it, y'all. They see her image in me and they Woo. fear my power. They sold me as commodity so that I would forget what I was worth, but you should have smashed my mirrors first. I mean, did you think I couldn't see? I am the beauty of gold and body. Black skin as beautiful as the galaxies they stole from my libraries, but not from my eyes. You can keep your idealistic paintings of me, but you will never bleach my skin or straighten my hair. Forbid the near drums of my tongue, but you will never quiet the lavish language of my dance. I will never lose my kinks, my fight, my fire. Save your cat calls for those deserving, because I do not play with rats. You will call me goddess, but you will not address me at all. Yeah.